So, you want to know how to do drag. <laughs> Hi, it's Trixie Mattel, and today it is time that I answer the most asked question on every single piece of social media. Many of you have probably watched a competition drag show or my channel or anything and you've gone on the internet on Google, who by the way is sponsoring part of today's video, and you're wondering, how do I do drag? How do I start doing drag? How do drag queens start doing drag? Well, it's kind of a conundrum because you just have to start, right? There's no right way. Even clowns have an official clown college, right? For drag, it's the school of hard knocks. So I sat down today and I wrote down a list of things that I'm gonna tell you and you about how to do drag, how to start your career correctly in the right mindset for the greatest success. Now, before we begin, I wanna say thank you to Google for sponsoring part of today's video. So if you watch my channel, any one of you know that I love supporting independent small businesses. I mean, my hair, my outfits, my jewelry. I think it's important to support small businesses whenever possible, and it's even better if you can shop more inclusively. That's why I love Google and the many tools they provide to help me support small businesses and help you support my small business. It shouldn't come as a shock to you in the 21st century that technology plays a huge part in the way we make our decisions on how we spend our money. So it's important that the tools we use align with our values. Google knows this too, which is why they've made sure that underrepresented and minority communities have equal access and representation in their online tools. These tools help create a free market where all of us can feel like we belong. For example, there are a few features on Google that I love that have already helped me find businesses I want to support. The features were news to me, so I'm just trying to help you out. One of my favorite features that really blew my mind is identity-owned business attributes. Businesses are able to identify as Black-owned, woman-owned, veteran-owned, Latino-owned. You can see these attributes on Google Search, Google Maps, Google Shopping, which makes it very simple to find them in your community. Google also helps small businesses connect with the LGBTQIA community with attributes like LGBTQ friendly, trans safe space, gender neutral bathrooms, let me know when they add drag queen approved air conditioning, I mean, if you're in Palm Springs and you drive by my motel, you would know that it's very gay because it's bright pink. But if you're 100 miles away looking for somewhere to stay in Palm Springs that's very LGBTQ plus friendly, Google can help you find me. If you want to know more about this, specifically if you're a small business owner, it's very cool. Check it out on belonging.google. Seriously, anytime you're in town somewhere and you just want to support a business that aligns with your beliefs, it's a fabulous tool. And I can't believe it's been right under my nose this whole time. Google is helping build a world where everyone can belong, even those of us who have a difficult time finding a women's shoe that fits. And thank you again to Google for sponsoring that part of my video. Now, on with the drag knowledge. You might be new to my channel. Before I start like running my mouth and telling you what I think you should be doing with your person in a wig drag performing life, I'm gonna tell you why I think I might have some credentials. I've been doing drag for 15 years. I started drag when I was 18 years old. I started doing drag in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with the Rocky Horror Picture Show at the Oriental Theater on the east side. So you have to imagine, most drag queens start drag in the clubs, I started in a rowdy movie theater with people wearing lingerie and throwing popcorn, coming in drunk. Imagine me 18 years old, like fresh from the country, putting on a wig and heels and just like fake blood and screaming. I mean, I don't, it was, <laughs> I mean, in some ways not that different from what I do now, but I went to see Bibi Zahara Benet at a bar in Milwaukee on my 21st birthday and I walked in alone in drag crazy, but I was just so interested in like finding out who was out there in drag. Cause at that time I'm three years into doing drag and I've never been another drag queen. I think it's very clear based on my drag now that I had no guidance for a long time. I was making and breaking my own rules. Someone comes up to me, says, what's your name? Would you do a show here on a Wednesday? Next thing you know, next week I have a gig. And then it all kind of spouted from there. And then if you're brand, brand new to the channel, I went on to do you know, a certain televised drag competition. I went to do it again in one. I've gotten to do so many unbelievable things in my drag career that when I started doing drag, like 15 years ago, there was no drag queens on television. There was no drag queens doing world tours or on billboard charts or none of that existed. None of that existed. So I'm gonna give you some good timeless knowledge that whether you start drag now or in 15 years, is very important. So I, try, I tried to make it a list of 10, but then I, I kept thinking of things. So let's just, I'm gonna rifle through it. You, person aspiring to wear a wig, 
Take notes now. You have to understand, when I started doing drag, it was a different time. Right now in the drag world, there's drag queens, and then there's way super famous versions of drag queens in the world. When I started doing drag, at the time, the most famous drag queens, you know, there was a few here and there who would travel the world, you know, maybe doing smaller cabaret shows, but there wasn't like drag queens on red carpets and television. I mean, that's all like a new thing. So it was a different time. There was no social media. There was no televised drag competitions, right? I'm from the wild west of drag. No one knew about it. No one cared about it the way they do now. So the first thing I'm gonna say, if you wanna start drag, the first thing I'm gonna say is don't. Now I know that that's controversial, but I just wanna say that the Hollywood televised version of drag, the drag that you know now looks so cool and magical and fabulous, and it is. But drag pretends to be much easier more lucrative, cooler than it really is. I mean, the reason I say don't is because, I mean, it, you're driving a lemon, right? Your body's a depreciating asset. I mean, I just wanna warn you, it's a little like getting an exotic pet. Like, you will be cleaning up drag droppings and feeding and watering your drag character for the rest of your life. It's like a virtual pet that won't stop beeping. The other reason I say don't is because drag has gotten so big that now the market is so saturated. There are so many drag queens. When I started, there was maybe 10 in my city, maybe. Now every city, there are dozens and dozens and dozens. There are thousands of drag queens in the United States, thousands. And there's not really more gigs and they don't really pay better for most drag queens. So the other reason I say don't is because drag is more popular than ever, but it's also harder than ever. It's more competitive than ever. I mean, these baby drag queens come out swinging because you have to be so beautiful and talented to really like, get paid now. But if I can't convince you, let's move on to number two. Next, I wanna say, do your own thing, especially visually. This is perhaps the most important thing you will learn from this video. Looking cool and distinct is extremely important in the art form of drag because drag at its core is very visual, right? I mean, it's a very visual art form. You have to not only look great, you have to look great in a different way than other people. Why is your phone gonna ring and not hers? I mean, you really have to think that way. And your look is so much a part of that. And when you're developing your look, it's important to kind of look at, what do I really look like? What do I wanna look like? And what's possible in the middle, right? For me, when I was developing my look, I loved obviously dolls, girl toys. I loved musical theater. There are certain actresses I liked, singers. So to me, it was sort of like, I had a mental vision board of this character before I had the skills to execute it. So it's important to plan to look very cool in a way that is cooler and more different than other people. I'll tell you why that's important. For example, after a drag show, I might not remember every drag queen's name in the show. So when I'm at the bar with my friends talking about the show we saw, I'm like, I love the girl in the red. I love the girl with the, the big black liner. Or like, I loved the girl with the long hair that she flipped around. Like, we kind of identify drag queens on their look before we know their name, unless their name is really good, which is kind of the flip-flop of have a great look. You gotta have a great name. And I mean, if you're not sure what to do, just go simple. Champagne, ugh, right? Cookie, oh, I mean, food and drink, you really can't go wrong. You know what I mean? Or like, I love weird names. Her name is Gloss. Oh, like one word. One word can be so impactful. Step two is to do your own thing visually. Step three, what are you gonna do when you get there? When we think of starting drag, we really talk about dressing up. When that number starts or that spotlight hits you and there's all those people, or sometimes not that many people, waiting to see you, what are you actually gonna do? What are you gonna do up there? Are you an amazing lip syncer? Can you sing? Can you dance? Can you do the splits? Can you do puppets? Can you do live comedy? Can you do magic? The options are endless, but the only way you're gonna be able to really compete in a very competitive industry is by not only looking great, like step two, but once you get out there, you gotta do something great. I mean, if you look great and you do something great, everyone's gonna hate you because you're so talented and good for you. Once you're out there too, even if you are doing something cool, you need to love it. Because even if you're not doing something that cool, if you love it, the audience loves it. I mean, if you stand there and lip sync and you love it, that's gonna be so much better than juggling chainsaws if you're not passionate about it. Very important. Step four, if you're gonna start drag, become very comfortable with the fact that you will be learning for the rest of your life. The day you start drag, I suggest you start learning. Learning to sew, learning to do hair, you have to learn to do makeup, learn to mix your own drag mixes, learn to DJ, learn to play the guitar. I mean, you know, in my career, I've had many seasons of it because I'm always adding things to my tool belt. I mean, again, if you're gonna look great and you're gonna be passionate on stage, 
Wouldn't it be great if you had a couple extra tools that other drag queens do not have? Hello. But if I could go back in time, I mean, I would start DJing, I would learn to edit photos, I would learn photography. There's so many skills that I did not acquire until later in my career. And I wish I at 21, I would have just started learning this stuff. Number five, do it for the right reasons. Here are some of the right reasons to be doing drag. To have fun, to engage in your community, to laugh, to act stupid, to meet up with your friends, to express yourself, to balance out a very boring part of your life with a very exciting part of your life. And there's nothing wrong with admitting you do it for a little bit of attention. These are the right reasons to be doing drag. These are the reasons that will really make the night enjoyable. How much money you make, all that is really not what you remember. I don't, re I don't remember an amount of money I've ever made at a show, but I remember who I worked with, something funny that happened. I mean, all of that is so much more important. The wrong reasons to do drag would be because it's extremely easy to make money. It's so lucrative, it's easy. It doesn't disrupt your dating life. Drag, it takes up all your time. It's a huge waste of money. It hurts your body. It ruins your sleep schedule. Those are the reasons that you really have to be realistic about if you're gonna embark in this because there's big parts of this that are so hard that never get easier. Of course, it never becomes comfortable. Drag never becomes cheap. Like, it's just hard forever, which is part of what makes it so rewarding and impressive. This is a little 2022 and beyond. Live online. You don't have to love the internet. You don't have to have social media. You don't have to do any of that. You know, maybe you have a mom who just goes on social media and posts memes and so you're like, I can't. But the character you're creating, the work you do, take pictures, take a million pictures. When you're performing, get someone in the audience to tape your performance so you can make content out of it. Follow other performers on social media to stay inspired. Social media is such a tool. When I was 20, Two, I started messaging girls in other surrounding markets and saying, hey, here's a video of me performing. Can I come do your show? And then I became lifelong friends with some of these people who I still work with today. So really like engage with your content online. Just do drag and put pictures of on the internet. Drag is so cool to look at. Don't deprive the people. This is really important. My advice to you in the beginning of your career, develop hmm, three to five really iconic cool numbers that you do very well that other people don't do. Maybe it's a number where you use a puppet or maybe you happen to really lip sync it well or maybe maybe you really look like that celebrity. There should be like three to five numbers that if you're at a brand new bar or somebody important in the audience, you're like, what are my real money makers? That the, maybe it's a really creative lip sync from a TV show or a film. What are my numbers that are like my bread and butter that I could perform completely asleep, the audience would love it, and it's different than anyone around me is doing. You don't really need to do a million songs. This drag queen I grew up doing drag with, she told me once, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I don't have enough numbers. And she said, the audience doesn't care if they see it twice as long as they liked it the first time. Which is really true, right? Either you're blown away the first time or the music starts and you turn to your friends and you go, oh, this number is amazing, you have to watch. So a good like half dozen numbers that you do really well is so much more important than doing 50 songs. Next tip, meet Everyone, if you work in a show, make sure you say hi to everyone in the room. Show up to the show early, get a drink at the bar, walk around in your little outfit, say hi to people who are gonna be in the audience. After the show, go to the bar, get your little lemonade, your little whatever, thank people for coming, take pictures of people. And if you don't work at any drag shows, get in drag and go to a drag show. Meet the drag queens, and I'm telling you, if you're nice enough and sweet enough, you will have a career fall into your laps because you go out and meet people. And I'll tell you this, meeting people, is like all of it. Meeting the show director, meeting the club owner, meeting the DJ. I mean, just knowing a few people is your foot in the door. That's it. It's honestly more important than being good at drag. If we're being honest, like knowing a few people who will book you is way more important than being some incredible artist that no one knows and no one has talked to. I mean, disclaimer, like I'm talking to the club attending age drag queen. If you're younger, you can do an 18 plus night. At my bar in Milwaukee, we have an 18 plus night. There's a lot more options for young drag queens than there used to be. This is very important. Next tip, know what to spend money on. If I could go back in time, I would become like a devil angel conscious on my shoulder watching my young self shop for drag. I'd be like, you could get that cheaper at the drugstore. Or I'd be like, that's a really good price even though it's kind of out of your price range. Later on, you'll find it way more expensive. There's some things in drag that are worth investing in, right? Foundation, for example. Investing in foundation is always really important. Lip colors, yeah, in the beginning you can go cheap. Investing in one good wig that you can style several different ways or use at every show in some way. Pieces, good pieces that fit your body well, that move well. 
you know, interesting belts, especially as a brand new drag queen. Listen, it's gonna be a lot of accessories trying to disguise the fact that you just wore that outfit last week. Let's say you find a black gown that fits you perfect, but it's like, ooh, it's a little out of your price range. Invest in it, a black gown that fits you well. You can accessorize it differently. That could be in a Halloween number. It could be in a pageant number. Investing in pieces that fit well and are very convertible is so important. In the beginning of my career, I had a swimsuit that I got from a fast fashion store that I wore literally once a week for five years. And all the drag queens would be like, are you really wearing that again? And I'd be like, yes I am, I liked it. And a side note to that is, the more you learn, the more you can save. When you learn to make hair, you don't have to give that girl $500 for hair anymore. When you learn to sew, you don't have to go buy an outfit anymore. You actually save money by learning these skills. The next one's kind of abstract, but I feel that as a young drag queen, we go to drag shows and we watch other people perform and we go, I wish that was me. How come I'm not on a cast? I wanna be on this show. Never underestimate the power of walking into a bar that does not have a drag show and saying, hey, I notice it's Tuesday night and you guys don't have a drag show. Would you be open to me having one here? I'll take care of everything. I'll book the people, whatever. A lot of these bars and stuff or pizza places, anywhere, they'll have a drag show. No one's asked yet. I feel like as young drag queens, we're basically waiting for older drag queens to die for us to get opportunities. Go make your own. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself, you should be going into bars or spaces that don't have drag and asking if you can do a show. I don't know why I didn't do that. I guess I was scared. And then suddenly, instead of having to wait for a girl to get sick for you get a, to get a gig, suddenly you have your own gig. That's fierce. I mean, at my bar in Milwaukee that I now own, originally I used to walk in and say like, hey, I'm in drag, do you wanna do something here? I mean, when I was in Milwaukee, most of my gigs were gigs where they were like, I was the drag queen. They didn't have drag shows. They would book me to come like talk to people and get drunk, which was kind of, you know, a highlight of my career. This is abstract, but always be prepared. Come prepared. There's always the drag queen and we call her Shanita. She need a lip pencil. She need a gown. She need a ride home. There's always a drag queen and you should comment her below. There's always one drag queen in every town who you're like, how did you come here with nothing? You don't have a CD to perform? Like you don't have a flash drive? You don't have a lip pencil? You don't have shoes? It's always some drag queen who's booked all the time who is really fun and sweet, great personality, but never has like, she's like, what jewelry did you bring? I'm like, the jewelry I'm gonna wear. No, you can't wear my jewelry I'm about to wear right after you, are you insane? Always bring your own stuff, bring backups. This is the reason you always bring a backup outfit. One, what if your zipper pops? Two, what if another girl's wearing the exact same outfit? And three, this is very important. If there's a no call, no show at a drag show, which does happen, believe it or not, cross dressers are not reliable. Suddenly you have a third number and you go, oh, do we have an, I'll do a third number for 40 more bucks. And they'll go, sure, great. Then you get her pay. Suddenly you have two pay that night because you packed an extra outfit. Little things like that, people remember it. They're like, that new girl was punctual, nice, and she had another outfit ready. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna book her again. I mean, it really is that small. The whole industry is based on who you know, what you do on stage, and how do you make people feel when you're in the room? Both backstage and on stage. How do you make people feel? We're almost there. One of the other ones I thought of is very important. Accept that you are going to be bad at drag for a very long time. Accept it, just accept it. Just know that, especially in the beginning, that night where you're like, oh my God, the way I ate. I'm telling you in six months when you look back, you'll be like, I don't think she ate. You're gonna look at the picture and go, what was I doing? For the first few years, you're gonna learn so fast. And every time you get in drag, you get so much better every time. You will literally be taking new headshots every six months because you improve so quickly. I'm at a stage in my career where I look pretty much the same all the time because what other skills could I build on? You're gonna get so good so fast, and part of that is looking back and being literally ashamed. But Katya says, if you don't look back and cringe at yourself, you're not growing. I'm telling you, throw up old pictures of me here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <sighs> looking bad is just part of drag. It's just part of drag. And even at your best in drag, in the wrong lighting, too many drinks, you know, everybody looks bad once in a while. Everybody has taken a tumble on stage. Drag at its core is accepting that once in a while, you're gonna look bad. In the beginning, it's a lot more frequent. Finally, and this is like really important, it's as important to be great backstage as it is to be great on stage. I'm telling you, I won't name names because I don't do that. This is an industry wrought with very talented people who will not get booked because when they leave the dressing room, people are like, she has an attitude. She was so late. She said something really mean to me. It's an industry of people who are so gifted, but they won't get the phone call because they, they didn't have a good showing in the dressing room 
or they said something inappropriate or they mouthed off to the owner. I mean, being respectful, being grateful, and being nice. All the most successful drag queens are nice. Doesn't matter what they say on stage or like what they say on their little YouTube cameras, being nice is so important. It is so important. The first time you get that booking that you're like, I can't believe I got that booking. Make sure you say thank you to the person who booked it. Say thank you to the DJ, say thank you to the security, say thank you to the other drag queens, get other drag queens phone numbers, hang out outside of drag. You could actually be horrible at drag, but if everyone loves having you around and you have good energy in a show, you will work forever. You'll work forever. Look at me, I'm totally disgusting and my phone's ringing off the hook. All right, so that's pretty much my beginner tips. I mean, it's not exactly technical. If you wanna learn about doing makeup or sewing, I mean, we have videos like this on this channel, but I wanted to do something that was a little more preparing you for the dramatic life altering event of starting drag. Be in the right mindset, be grateful, be open and be ready to start from the bottom. And you can't start from the bottom and enjoy yourself unless you have an extremely good attitude about the art form you are about to add your voice to. If this video made you not wanna do drag, I'm glad I could help. If this video made you certain that you wanted to start drag, congratulations. If you ever come for me, if you ever take one of my bookings, I'll um, And you know, it's a very cutthroat industry, but if you enjoy yourself and surround yourself with good people, I'm telling you, 15 years in this industry flew by because I love it, still love it. Okay, thank you for watching. If you have a drag tip that I missed out on, please put it below, help the children out. Be a children who helps the children. Thank you, goodbye.